want to begin with a very warm uh, congratulations to our newest deacon in the diocese. Deacon Alessandro Calderoni was ordained a deacon by Bishop Condorla last Saturday. Yes. Uh, it was a beautiful Mass uh, last Saturday morning at Holy Family Cathedral, and then we didn't see him last weekend because he was at his home parish in Muskogee preaching as a deacon for the first time. Uh, we'll, uh, he's going to be preaching here next weekend. We're putting him to work, making him earn his keep. Um, and then at the end of Mass, our other seminarian, uh, Leo Morales, is going to just take a moment to introduce himself. Um, we're just so blessed to have two seminarians with us all summer long. Uh, great blessing for Father Robert, Father Kerry, and I, and, uh, and for the whole parish. Um, this past week, we've kind of been a little bit getting back to normal. Now, I know there's been a uh, just in the last couple of days, a, a spike in uh, COVID cases. And, but kind of right before that, we were, we were starting to, Father Robert and I, to, to venture out. Um, and we were going to visit people who are still not able to come to Mass. Um, so these are individuals who might be older, uh, who are choosing to stay home, maybe people who are caring for somebody who has an underlying health condition, just people who haven't been coming to Mass. We were going to them. And in the few visits that we made this week, um, one thing was very apparent. I was expecting those that we visited to be happy to see us, maybe just happy to see another person in person. Certainly happy to be able to receive the Eucharist. But what I saw was kind of another level of joy. I mean, one instance visited a parishioner, and as soon as it came to the point just in her living room, when I took the pics out of my pocket, which contained the sacred host, and I opened it and put it on the table, tears began to flow. In her case, it had been literally months since she had been to church, Months since receiving our Lord in the Eucharist. And so there was this really emotional reaction. And it was really quite beautiful. I think sometimes people have an expectation of priests, of sort of regular church-going Catholics, that we just sort of get it. And we don't need to be reinvigorated in our faith that everything's just kind of steady. But it's not true. Every once in a while, it's nice to have a reminder of why we're here. A reminder of the importance of what we are doing each and every Sunday. For me, that was those visits this week. To see the joy, to see the passion with which this particular parishioner longed for the Eucharist. Made me look at my own life and say, do I do that? Do I have that level of love and devotion for the Eucharist? I'd like to think I do, but I don't always. These days have been marked by kind of the ups and downs of life. Coming to Mass, not being able to come to Mass. Many people even now are watching this on their computers, watching it on their screens, unable to be here with us. But I want to offer what I think will help us, no matter when, whether you're here or whether you're at home, to enter more deeply into the great mystery of the Eucharist. We're celebrating today Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the body and blood of the Lord. A particular weekend when the readings point us towards that beautiful teaching of our church, that through the power of the Holy Spirit on this altar and altars like it around the world, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that the bread and the wine become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. There's a moment in the Mass, pre-virus, we would bring the gifts up from the back. The bread and the wine would make their way forward, be handed to the priest. The priest takes them up and puts them 
on the altar. In these days, we're kind of minimizing that interaction. And so all of the elements, all of the bread and the wine are back on the table. Leo will bring them over to the altar in procession. But there's that moment, ideally, when there's not a worldwide pandemic, that the gifts are brought from the people and they are brought forward. They are presented to the priest who takes them to the altar to do what? To eat them all himself? Of course not. The gifts of bread and wine are then offered up to God. They're offered as gifts from the people to the Lord God. And then those same gifts, that same bread and wine, which right at this moment, if you walked over there, ordinary bread, ordinary wine. Nothing has changed. But in just a moment, when those elements are brought here to this altar, they will, in fact, change. We use the word transubstantiation, that the substance of the bread, the substance of the wine, trans, it changes. What does it change into? Super bread? No, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. So in that moment, though, when the priest offers up to God the bread and wine, I think this can help us enter more deeply into the mystery of the Mass. Sometimes we have in our minds that coming to Mass is and can be a kind of a passive activity. I come in, I sit down, some people say some things, uh, I come up, I receive communion, and I leave. Right? Sometimes we can have that passive way of coming to Mass. But in fact, if we're ready, and if we're really into it, and if we're very conscious of what we're doing Sunday after Sunday, the Mass is incredibly active. Many times people come visiting maybe from another church or they've never been to church, and they say, wow, you guys, like, you guys like stand and sit and kneel a lot. In my family, we called it little Catholic calisthenics, right? Up, down, kneel, sit, stand, right? We're, we are very active. And each of those postures, each of those gestures happens for a reason. When Leo was reading today from Deuteronomy, when we heard the psalm, and when we heard St. Paul to the Corinthians, we were sitting. When Deacon Alessandro went over to proclaim the gospel, we stood. Because the gospel is the words of Jesus. And for us, those are of the highest importance, and we stand. Not that Deuteronomy is not important, not that St. Paul to the Corinthians is not important, it certainly is, it's the word of God. But the gospels are higher, and so we stand. Right? Each and every posture in the Mass has real meaning. But when the priest comes and offers the bread and the wine up, it's important for us to remember, and maybe you're hearing this for the first time, or maybe you heard it when you were younger and you forgot about it, but something very active can happen there. When the bread and wine are offered up, we are meant to bring our lives right to that moment. The prayers that each of us bring to this Mass. Now, at every Mass... The priest has a particular intention for which that Mass is being offered. It might be somebody who's died. It might be somebody uh, going through something. Um, in many cases, on my day off when I celebrate Mass, I usually will call my mom and I say, Mom, what do you got? Oh, you, Lois at church, she's not feeling well. And I say, okay, today I'm going to pray for Lois. And then my mom calls Lois and tells her, oh, my son's a priest, he celebrated the Mass, and Lois is all happy, right? Every priest at every Mass has a particular intention. One of the Masses each weekend, if you didn't know, is called the Pro Popolo Mass. The Mass is celebrated for the people of that parish. So every Sunday, you are having a Mass celebrated for you. 
you didn't know. But when the priest offers up the bread and wine, that's a moment where we are to take what's going on in our lives, what's going on in the world, and we offer that up to the Father along with the priest. I don't know everything that's going on in your life. You have things maybe that other people know, maybe things going on in your life that nobody knows. What do we do with those prayers? We lift them up to God. And it doesn't just have to be things that we need or that we want. It doesn't have to just be somebody who's died or somebody who's ill. It can also be the things in our lives for which we are grateful. That moment where the priest lifts up the bread, lifts up the wine, that's a moment when we take the stuff of our lives and we put them on that patent. We put them in that chalice as they too are offered up to God. And so the Mass is anything but a passive activity. It is indeed very active. And so I hope that each Sunday, again, whether you are here, whether you are at home, that you are bringing the stuff of your lives to this altar. And then they are offered up as a sacrifice to God. Offered up to Him so that He might hear them and do something with them. I don't know if you ever heard that before, but it's a little part of the Mass that can make the Mass so much more meaningful. It can make the Mass so much more prayerful when you say, yes, I'm bringing all of my junk, all of my stuff, that guy from work that annoys the heck out of me, my grandma who's not feeling well, my own health, my own employment issues, whatever they may be. You look around the world and you look at the, the illness that's going on. You look at the racial reconciliation that needs to happen in so many places, right? We bring all of that and we lift it up to Almighty God. And we do that especially in the celebration of the Mass. There's much more that could be said. There's books and books and books on the parts of the Mass and what they all mean. But I give you that little nugget today. That as we celebrate the solemnity of the Lord's body and blood, that we would always be mindful that you and I are offered up on that patent along with the bread and the wine. Our prayers, our lives. And then that we may never take for granted the great gift of the Eucharist in our lives. There's many in our parish who have recently received Holy Communion for the first time. Some of them second graders. Some of them adults recently confirmed in the church. May we never take that for granted. That the Lord wants to be with us. That the Lord wants to feed us. That the Lord wants to hear our prayers.